Welcome everyone to RimWorld Royalty. So our last series ended quite tragically with a mishap between doors and stuff, um, but that was a base game vanilla RimWorld. Today we are going to be starting a series that sp kind of focuses on the DLC that was put out by Ludion Studios, the creators of RimWorld. So for this series we will again be using a few mods. I've also added a few and I've removed a few. Um, the main mod that I re removed is Complex Jobs just because I think it's a little bit better to keep it a mostly simple. Um, so if we scroll down here, the mods that we will be using are Rim HUD, again just at a glance shows stats, Research Tree, reorganizes Research Tree, Allow Tool allows us to allow more things, Camera for more viewing action, Relations shows who likes each other, works on, um, this works on how fast your game runs again at a glance to see how well or good a colonist is replace stuff allows you to just replace walls so that you don't have to tear it down or you, you tear it down but then it replaces it so you don't have to do as much work smart speed just adds a level 4 speed open doors don't block light um, well that's just logic um, quality builder allows you to set a quality that you want to build to and if the con created thing doesn't fit that quality it'll auto be It'll auto be deconstructed and then reconstructed um, until it hits the quality that you want or above. Medical tab um, allows you to manage your medical stuff better. No force slowdowns allows you to go speed 3 in a raid. No burn metal, which if you guys watched last series, is one of the reasons why we lost. Um, our steel walls caught fire and the entire workshop burned down, so that was cool. Um, so this will stop steel, plastic, and gold, and silver from burning, so pretty good. Interaction bubbles just allows you to see the social interactions between everyone. I think it allows you guys to have a more um, more interactive experience with the colonists. Just ignore me passing allows two people to walk through a door. Um, search agency allows you to search stuff. Heat map is tuggable and it shows you how hot a room is. Frame rate control, again, um, computer not computer boosting, um, performance boosting, drugs are not food, again, changes some drugs so they're not food, um, draggable corners allows you to, me to create a box instead of having to do it one by one, don't block the door mod, it'll stop people from blocking the door, cut plants before building, they will cut the, pl like, they'll cut the plants and then place down the blueprint, damage indicators, how much damage, how much damage a person is dealing, like 10, 10, okay, but at Better Vanilla Masking, just a little bit of graphical stuff. Blueprints allows you to copy already built structures. Auto cut blight. Any blight will be auto set to cut. Act ton. Um, more visual stuff. Gunplay um, makes combat look more interesting. As we look down here, trails for projectiles, weapon animations, all kinds of cool stuff. And architect icons just gives icons for each of the categories. But I think with all that said, let's get right into it. So I think, again, we could go for the Rich Explorer. But I'm thinking that we go for the Crash Landed to start again. So there we go. And we're going to go for, I think we did Cassandra Classic last time. Let's go for Randy Random at Striving to Survive. That sounds good. Can we um, reload anytime just in case something bad happens? That, you know, that's not within my control. Um, sure, generate the planet. Alright, here is our planet. And similar to last time we played, I kind of want... I want a mountain to tennis, or at least hills and rivers. This guy has small hills. Limestone and slate, marble and limestone. I want a river and hills. So let me find that real quick. And I think I found the spot that we're going to set up our colony. I want to be fairly near the Empire because that's kind of what this entire series is about. You know, the Empire and kind of the stuff that surrounds that. Um, though the growing period isn't great. Let me think about this for a second. Alright, I think I found the place. It's a lot more out of the way than everywhere else, but it's also got some pretty good traits. First off, um, actually it's mountainous. You know what? I think that'll be fine. We can have a mountainous river base. Um, it's got 50 out of 60 days for growing. Um, 
it's got marble and slate so there's no granite there but at least there's marble um, and there's average disease compared to other places like the tropical rainforest has like two diseases per person per year so I think this will be a good place to go and the Empire is fairly close and there's a road so it's not super great but I think it'll be suitable for our purposes and I will be going for the medium size because I like medium size so all right here's for our colonists sorry you're a bad colonist actually all right all of these colonists are pretty much horrible let me randomize these guys all right guys I think we have our three colonists so first off we have Cell who will be our I guess may <laughs> the six-year-old melee person um, she's got a burning passion for mining five in cooking three in plants six in artistic seven in medical and a minor burning passion for intellectual so she'll be our intellectual slash medical person and she has some pretty amazing traits as well um, careful shooter gives plus 25 percent anytime but plus five shooting accuracy Sanguine is permanent plus 12, and beautiful means everyone is happy around her. So now we go to Larson. Larson has decent shooting, double passion in it, so she'll learn pretty quickly. She has the two smart, xenophile, and kind traits. Um, she will be, she'll be our cook, slash artistic, slash social person. Um, she's also got a minor passion for a plant, so that's good as well. Um, and for Jet... He is a, he's kind of our construction mining guy who has cooking and plants as well. A lot of cooking and plants. Um, he is an undergrounder, quick sleeper, and gourmand. So quick sleeper is actually a really good trait. It means he needs half the amount of sleep pretty much. I mean, you can read it here. He will be fully rested in about two-thirds the usual time. Undergrounder, as long as he stays in, he will get a mood buff. And gourmand just means he's good, better at cooking, but is hungrier so I think this will be our setup crew um, we could do a little bit more of them but overall I'm mostly happy with these guys so let's get into it alright guys our people are just about to land um, here is our map as you can see it's kinda of divided into two halves with the mountains bordering this left side um, I'm just kinda of thinking of where we'll base we don't want to be too close to this part. I guess we can redirect the, the, uh, cause attackers will come from here, here, and here. Um, they can't come from here. Uh, they might be able to come from the river, but that's about it. Um, so how do we want to do this? We could set up over here, but that would kind of limit how much space we have. And if we set up down here, I'm thinking we set up down here. First off, there's a lot of green space. We can carve out a decent chunk of the you know mountain there is a bunch of steel over here as well that's one benefit now yeah, more steel right here and we can easily redirect the enemies so we can carve a path through here build a wall across here and then they'll have to come along here there's also the anima tree um, this I'm pretty sure is from I think uh, the royalty mod M royalty mod um, the royalty DLC and it's for people, if you have a tri tribal background, um, you can meditate towards it. And that's how you don't correlate with the, uh, if you don't, you know, agree with the Empire, you can still get psychic powers. And after thinking about it a, l a little bit more, I think this is definitely going to be where we set up our base. Just because if we set up up here, there's, you know, we, at the end of the day, we can't block off all this. Um, they'll just break through the walls. Um, but this is a lot more manageable, so I think we are definitely going to base down here. Alright, so I've set up all their jobs and stuff, and I also set up a stockpile zone. In addition, there's also this uh, steam geyser, so we can get some two steam geysers, so we can get power from that. Um, but I guess we can plan out our base now. Um, we're going to build that out of wood at first, because wood is a readily available... I think this is an ancient danger. Um, wood is a readily available source so we'll just do something like that that'll kind of be our main house and I think we can connect to this as well um, indoor storage 
then we need houses so five by five should be fine for now something like this yeah that should be fine even if it is a little bit uneven there we go so while the, our colonists are sleeping um i actually didn't realize this but we only have one colonist capable of hauling so we definitely need a new colonist soon because I don't think Jed is going to have enough time to do it all by himself. Even if he only does need two-thirds of the sleep of everyone else. And we just got a bunch of cargo pods that landed right next to our base with a bunch of rice. I mean, I, I guess thank you whoever sent those. And pretty much instantly Jed has gone on a tantrum because he refuses to follow my schedule. And he just destroyed the components. That, really? The, the one thing that actually mattered you destroyed. <sighs> Go back to your jobs. But I guess now is a good time to plan out our food. Um, where do we want this? We want our normal soil, so I'm going to do a 8x8 eight eight zone for potatoes. It auto defaults to that. Um... We have some good plants, so we can immediately grow heel root as well. So I guess I'll do an 8x5 of heel root. Heel root. There we go. And then I can do a another 8x5 for cotton. There we go. So they should start working on that. And our animal that we started off with is a... I think that's a Yorkshire Terrier called Tallface. Bit ironic if you ask me. And unfortunately, Tallface just caught the Tallface just caught the plague. And um, sorry, Tallface, I think you're gonna die of the plague because we're not giving you any medicine. All right, we have everything hauled over to our stockpile now, and this is gonna be the stockpile zone. So I want to start planning out a workroom, and I think we're just gonna put it right here, and then I'll move their horseshoe pin. Um, and then I think we're also just going to tear down the structure. So, there we go. Just have them tear that down. Um, just because it's kind of in the way. Alright, we are now up to naming our faction. Um, I'm just going to leave it as the default. If you guys have any better names, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Um, I'll select the best one because I'm not great at naming things. And just to completely destroy us. So, it was bad enough that... Jet immediately went on a tantrum and destroyed all of our components, but the game has now decided to give us a heat wave when we need electricity and and coolers which require components to cool the room so that we don't die of heat stroke. Do you guys see the problem there? Um I guess is there any here's some components. What else is on the map? Are they all where are they? See you some right there. Am I blind? There oh well, it doesn't look like there's any near us. There's two over here. I guess we'll mine these. And pretty insanely, uh Tallface managed to weather the plague with no medicine. So good job, Tallface. So we managed to get the wind turbine up and I've installed passive coolers, so this should keep the rooms n not you know meltingly hot it's uh 60 ish degrees in there right now it's 110 outside so they're doing a pretty good job however i want actual coolers because i think our next project is going to be a cooler a cooler um a re um an ice room or refrigerator whatever you want to call it um and i want to keep the buildings kind of segmented so I guess I'll put it right here. All right, I'll put the cooler right here and attached to it, I'll add the kitchen. There we go. It's also about time that we start on our research. So I'm gonna put the simple research bench in here and we have all the stuff, it's just not in a stockpile. And thankfully the heat wave is now over. And something kind of cool that I wanna show off is the heat map mod. I talked about it earlier briefly, but here's what it actually does. 
if we click on it, it shows you how hot a place is. And overall, I think it's a really cool mod, and it looks very, very nice. And we just got our first quest, and I'm pretty sure this is the Empire quest, the Solitary Duchess. Iona Arinites, a Duchess of the Dominion of God, is calling from nearby. Her guards were killed in an ambush. She escaped, but is now being followed by a man-hunting raccoon. Okay. We have to keep her safe until her shell arrives. And then... She will bestow eight royal favor on whoever accepts it. This is enough favor to receive the royal title of Yeoman. And all the benefits that come with it, including the first level of psychic powers. Let's accept it. Um, actually, I think... Whoever we accept with will become psychic. So I think we're going to give that to Jet. Just because he's kind of the main person in our colony. Well, then again. No, I think we are going to give it to Jet. He's just kind of simply the best colonist that we have. So we'll accept with Jet. Alright, the new person disjoined. What? Psy focus? Call royal aid? That's kind of cool. Throne speech? Okay, that's bio. Whoa. Okay, she has throne speech, pain block, water skip, chaos skip, teleporting, um, wall raise, invisibility, and mass chaos skip. So everyone teleport. That's kind of cool. And they have all the psi focus and psi stuff down here. Um, oh, we can use all of their abilities too. Um, can we just form a wall wherever you want where where did she spawn how does this work oh it's just like a four by four okay um i'm gonna move her over to our base and then we can get everyone out there here to deal with that man hunting raccoon there it is the destroyer of worlds all right our people are now engaging really did you just shoot the okay really guys come on she which one shot it through that wall. Okay, whatever. All we need to do is rescue her. Um, I guess. Sorry, Cell. You're no, you no longer get a bed. We have to rescue the royalty. There we go. All right, and her shuttle has just arrived. So we're just gonna carry into the shuttle and not care about her anymore. Yep, bring her to the shuttle. Okay, you can leave shuttle. Send. There we go. Wow, okay, that's, that's a lot of notifications. Freeholder title gained. Jet gained the Freeholder from the Dominion. It cannot be inherited. Okay, the UMN title gained. Um, it cannot be inherited, and he will receive the following items via transport pod. Silink Neuroformer, that sounds fun. Title rewards, we got the Silink Neuroformer. There it is. Um, and a quest complete. Alright, kind of cool. And I guess we should use that immediately, so... Is that like a medical thing? Do we have to operate on him? Install? Can he just use it? It looks like he can. Alright. Alright, just like that, he has his Psylink now. Um, he has Ping Block. Okay, that's a decent power, I guess. Block pain pathways in the target's brain for a short time. This can allow a person to move and act even with grievous injuries, so pretty much he can't be knocked out by pain. Which I guess is, is a useful ability. But I think that will be the end of this first episode. Today has been pretty productive. First off, we now have a psychic person. Um, we set up a base, a basic base. Um, we have bedrooms, a storage room. Um, we almost have a research table up. And we are on the works of a dining room, a kitchen, and a freezer. So if you guys did enjoy, please like, subscribe, share, comment. All of that support that gets us out there is very greatly appreciated. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great day, and goodbye.